I'm Joe Kahn and welcome to our program. This week we're headed to the Mohawk Valley and to the city of Amsterdam. Our guest is Mike Villa of Amsterdam. Mr. Villa is the supervisor in charge of the Social Services Fraud Unit for Montgomery County. He's a lifelong resident of the city of Amsterdam and you are the Republican candidate for mayor of Amsterdam, New York. Mr. Villa, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Mike Villa, tell us about the city of Amsterdam. Uh, it's steeped in history, really. Uh, a very big manufacturing uh, community back in the early part of the 1900s and the 20s, 30s, 40s with the carpet mills. Uh, we had the Sanford Stud Farm. In fact, there's a race named after that at Saratoga still to this day that had a major impact on the city. We had um, Mahasco. Uh, so we we're really uh, the carpet leader uh, in the country, really. And like a lot of other industrial cities, that kind of uh, moved away, moved south, disbanded, and the community kind of suffered and really, uh, to this day, has never really fully recovered from, from that. We went from populations that were near 40,000 to now we're somewhere around 17, 18,000. I checked your about, I was going to ask you about, you're about 19,000 right now. Is your, po you're kind of implying that your population is diminishing and you're not growing? Well, I think if the last census shows a slight increase, um, but if you look overall in the picture, obviously we've, we've decreased. I think we've stabilized a little bit right now, uh, but the question has to be asked is that we, why, why is anyone coming here? We, we haven't really created enough jobs to to support an attractive audience to come here yet. What is the biggest industry in the city of Amsterdam right now? Well, we have two major employers, and, and that would be St. Mary's Hospital and uh, Liberty Enterprises. And then they both are um, employ the largest amount of people uh, in this, really in the Tri-County area for Fulton Montgomery. They're uh, the biggest employers. Now, you're a former detective in the Amsterdam Police Department. Crime in urban areas like Chicago, New York, Baltimore seems to be pretty high. What about the city of Amsterdam? How is urban crime right now, gangs? Fortunately, we don't have a, a gang issue at this time. Um, we do have crime, obviously. Well, I, I think any time that your population uh, is at or below the poverty level, when you have a growing population that's in that framework, you're going to have problems with crime. We have the same issues that a lot of communities have with uh, prescription drug problem, uh, heroin problem, uh, but I don't think we're any different than anyone else. But violent crime, in my opinion, uh, since last fall has kind of spiked a little bit. So there's areas that, that are of concern uh, when you have blighted neighborhoods and blighted properties that continue to grow, they, they end up becoming hotbeds for crime. So it's an area that I'm very interested in addressing. Uh, As mayor of the city of Amsterdam, how would you try to diminish the uh, crime rate or lower the crime rate? Well, I think it starts there. I think you have to improve your neighborhoods. Obviously, with a law enforcement background, I spent 20 years with Amsterdam Police Department. Uh, I have my own ideas on, on what I think can improve uh, where we are today, I think the police department does a fine job, but like anyone else, I have my own ideas on how I would attack certain areas that I see to be a problem. So I think I bring that level of experience um, uh, to that problem. What do you think of Governor Cuomo's uh, SAFE Act? Do you think it's been beneficial for the city of Amsterdam or made any difference? As a retired police officer, and currently a welfare fraud investigator, I'm a huge Second Amendment supporter. Okay. And so um, I think New York State has the strictest gun laws already in place. And if you look at, I mean, if you go nationwide, I mean, the city of Chicago has even stricter laws than we do. And you can see their homicide rate has spiked dramatically over the last two, three, four years. So I don't think it's so much of uh, in New York State of restricting gun laws any further. I don't think, I think all you're doing is restricting the, the people who uh, use guns uh, that have grown up with them. We're a community, really, that's rural. If you look at where Montgomery County is, 
Uh, we are a rural community. Uh, even though the city of Amsterdam is a, is a city, hunting, fishing are huge uh, in that area. So no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not for the SAFE Act and uh, actually was for the repeal of the SAFE Act. Well, I don't have a gun myself, but I'm of the opinion that if a criminal wants to get a gun, they're going to get it, whether it's legal or not. They don't care about the yeah. law. I don't think we've done enough to address the um, mental health situation that every community faces. There's not enough uh, support systems. And I think if you've seen these last killings that have occurred nationwide, uh, there's been a background of, of mental health issues where the system has failed that person. And so I think that's the area that really needs to be attacked. One more uh, police uh, question about the city of Amsterdam. There seems to be a very big anti-police feeling in the United States of America. Has that translated down to uh, the attitude of Amsterdam citizens towards your police? I don't see it. I really don't. I think we have a great community. I think people uh, respect uh, the police officers. And it's sad to see what's going on uh, nationwide because when you start losing that first line of defense, when they become a target, um, we are all in some serious trouble because that first line of defense, when something goes wrong, who are you calling? So I think the attacks on police are um, unjustified. Of course, there's bad in every group, in every career, uh, but overall, if you look at the amount of arrests that are made nationwide, it's minuscule. Uh, the percentage of, of things that occur that are um, improper or maybe an officer wasn't trained properly, but you have to applaud anyone that wears a uniform today. You were telling me the other day that one of the things that you want to do as mayor of Amsterdam is to revitalize the uh, downtown area. You want to talk about that? We do need revitalization because I think if you look at um, areas that, that have, were industrial once or um, really struggled. The way they brought themselves back was uh, through tourism. Uh, that's been a big boost to many areas, to many communities. But in, in, in attracting tourism, you have to be attractive. So it, it has to start with, we have to rebuild uh, the neighborhoods in the city of Amsterdam. We have to really attack the blight. We've allowed um, ourselves to uh, build this 600 plus homes that have been falling in disrepair and finally going to foreclosure where we did not do a foreclosure for that entire period of time. So we've now got this mass accumulation of blighted properties, abandoned buildings. And I think for us to become attractive or to have an opportunity to be a bedroom community, we really need to uh, put the fight on to eradicate the blight in these neighborhoods. Um, it's very close to a middle school, uh, so you want to be as attractive as you possibly can if you're going to attract home buyers or anyone wanting to move into the city to send their kids to school. So that is one of our um, priorities, is, is to really address the blight. And, and I've been asked several times, you know, what's your plan? And if I've been asked once, I've been asked a thousand times. But I am not the I am not the sitting mayor. I'm a candidate for mayor. So all I can give you is what my priorities are. To to fabricate and formulate a plan, you need to be a part of a team. So I would have to work with the council, the controller's office, the private sector, listen to the people's concerns, then put those priorities into action and formulate a plan. So yes, we have priorities, but I'm not gonna craft a plan prior to getting elected. Now you speak, feel that revitalization of the neighborhoods would then bring about uh, more businesses coming to the city of Amsterdam? I think uh, as elected officials, the one thing or two things that we owe uh, the residents, the taxpayers, is a place where people wanna live and a place where people wanna do business and I think we have failed in, in, in those two areas. So I think when you address that, when you address the areas that people see as, as run down, I'll describe for you, Montgomery County did a very extensive um, survey that was uh, extensive and expensive. 
and entailed many, many things to try and improve and see where the county could grow and, and become um, inviting to businesses and to people, home buyers. When they described all the other surrounding areas, Fort Plain, Kanjahari, uh, all the areas of the county, it was rural, pleasant, nice, agriculture. When they described Amsterdam, both interviews done with elected officials and with residents all came up with the same answers. Uh, crime, poor, rundown. We have to change that perception. If we don't change that perception, we're never going to attract either businesses or another generation of home buyers. So we have to start from what we have now before we jump into other waters um, on building other things or creating other things. We need to fix right now what we have. That's what I believe is it would have to be the plan to make us um, attractive enough to, to get tourism for the pedestrian bridge, to bring people in that would want to come here. And it's a, it is still a beautiful city. We have a lot of positives. We have a beautiful golf course. Robert Trent Jones Golf Course. You'll be hard pressed to find a better public uh, golf course in the entire United States. Uh, we have Shuttleworth Park where the Mohawks play, a great venue to bring your family and, and spend a night. So we have jewels, we have water, an abundance of water that really is our crown jewel. So we have to find ways to market that, to improve it, to maybe share with into Fulton County and even into Saratoga County because we have that much water. But we have to improve the Glen Wild um, dam system, maybe expand it, maybe put a, a, a pump station in in between. So there are areas that we can work on to help us grow, but it's gonna take time and it takes a, a, an effort of teamwork. I forgot to mention one other asset, you have the Amsterdam Little Giants there. We do. A very good program. Long-standing program. How is uh, the Amsterdam uh, Mall doing right now? It, it, I, you go over there and you don't see that many tenants in it. Well, I, I have to be honest with you. We were fortunate to have someone like Mr. Tessero that took that over because otherwise that would be another abandoned building. Um, it is almost at full occupancy for businesses. Uh, oh, really? Of course, we don't have retail in there. Um, but we do have the uh, Department of Social Services has rented space in there. We have a satellite office in there that employs uh, about 40 people. So there is now traffic in there. Um, you know, it's the best that we could hope for. Uh, as you see, Rotterdam Mall has suffered a, a, a very similar fate. So. Uh, we're fortunate that Mr. Tessero at least has the building. It is occupied. There is a restaurant that just moved into the old uh, Pizza Hut. So, I, I, you know, it's the best that it could be as far as I can see. Because retail is difficult for us now. If you look at when we expanded water up to Route 30 uh, to the town of Amsterdam, uh, that pretty much the retail is all north of the city. So it's very difficult for us now to attract retail with the traffic all being north of us. 